Hi, it's time for math, and we are going into math for a review, and this review is based on Unit 3 for Kindergarten Math through iReady. So we learned a lot of shapes, not just the shapes that we learned in pre-K, but other shapes that um, I don't have here, but that men do need to be mentioned. Um, and they're three-dimensional shapes. So we have the cylinder, we have the sphere, we have the cube, and we have the cone. So those shapes were already introduced and we worked on them. Now we're just going to only focus on the faces of them because that's what we are going to be using on the test. But before we do that, um, we are going to use um, two-dimensional shapes, which is what we're going to do as an activity today. So, here we have one of the shapes that we learned, which is square, and the other one is a rectangle. We also learned about the circle, and obviously about the triangle. What's really important about it is that we added this shape, which is the hexagon. The hexagon has six sides, and today we are going to work with the triangle and the hexagon because we're going to try to use other small shapes to make the hexagon and the triangle. So some of these are called what is called in math pattern blocks. Pattern blocks. And so pattern blocks have this shape here, which is a trapezoid. We have a triangle. And we have a rhombus, or like somebody, some people call it a diamond. Now the pattern block is a little thicker, if you see. It's thicker than the other shapes that we have here. So these are what we call flat shapes, you know, because they are completely, completely flat. So our activity today uh, is to focus on making a big triangle and another copy of the hexagon from the pattern block, okay? Using these shapes that we have here. So, we're going to start with um, hexagon. And the hexagon is very easy, so I'm going to bring my camera down so that you can see what we're going to do. So, here we have a hexagon, and we are going to use two trapezoids. The two trapezoids, if you put them together in opposite uh, placement like this, it turns into a hexagon. And if you put it on the hexagon that's yellow, it makes a perfect match. See? We can also do, on the hexagon, a, using rhombus and triangles. So I'm going to use two rhombuses and two triangles. That's another way to make a hexagon. I can also make a hexagon with just three rhombuses. So my three rhombuses would be like this. And you see, you put the three rhombuses and it forms a hexagon. And now I'm going to make another hexagon, right? Another hexagon with just all the triangles that I can fit in here. So let's start with one. 
two, and three, four, five, and six. And now I have six triangles forming a hexagon. So these are different ways to make it, and you can have various ways of making it. These are not the only ways to make it. There are many, many other ways to make it. So this is something that you can practice and start creating out of shapes different images. It doesn't have to be a hexagon and a triangle. But since this was the last lesson that we did in math and Spanish as well as in English, I wanted to review on this because we're going into our test sometime this week. So now I'm going to remove all these pattern block shapes and put the hexagons to the side so that I can bring in the triangle. So here's the first triangle that I have. So this triangle is flat, and I'm going to use a combination of trapezoids, I mean, hexa, um, a combination of rhombus, thank you, of rhombus and triangles. So here goes the bottom of the triangle and then I'm going to finish on top with another rhombus and two more triangles. So if we start counting how many do we have as rhombus which is the blue one two three. How many do we have as a triangle one two and three. So there's three of each. This is one way to make a triangle. Another way to make a triangle right, is making it with um, trapezoids. So I'm going to use a trapezoid here, another one here, and I'm going to add this rhombus here. So the only shape that should fit in here is a triangle. And this is how you do it. Now these are different ways of making the triangle, but you have no limit of how many different ways you can do it. I was amazed to see um, some of my scholars um, do different kinds of triangles. They did it very spontaneously. And I like that because um, it brings me to think that they were paying attention and they're actually going beyond of just a flat shape. Okay, so let's have a combination of each one. And I'm going to put another rhombus as well as this trapezoid in red, we have the rhombus in blue, and I'm going to put some triangles. And as you see, the triangle starts having its own formation, but if you see, every angle has to be exactly the same, because we're actually making the equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle is the only triangle that has all of their sides the same. And there's not one longer or shorter. They're all the same length. So that's why they're called an equilateral triangle. So here are some of the examples that we have done. You can make many more examples of this and start mm. practicing because um, a lot of what's coming has to do with the position of objects, but also these shapes. It's important that these are two-dimensional shapes, and some of them are called pattern blocks because they're designed in this thick way, right? Versus the bottom you see here is a very thin 
shape that is flat. All right, and remember, smart is not something you are. Smart is something you get.